What does the zero say to the eight? Nice belt. Hey everyone, Joe Workman here, and in this video, we're gonna have a really quick video to show you how to use Pi to update existing form fields. So we're gonna be looking at demo seven, and um, it's just gonna be this is gonna be a really quick video because it's a pretty simple concept, but I wanted to have this this as a separate video just to kind of show you um, how to do that if you wanted to do it. So here we are looking at the Pi demo project that ships with Pi, and this is demo seven. And we're not gonna look at all the details of this demo, uh, but we're, we wanna see how we can update form fields. So here we have a simple slider that um, is named month slider. And this Pi, essentially what it does is it is it has a custom function, and to learn more about custom, custom functions, check out our advanced Pi video on using custom functions. But basically it uses a custom function, it passes the value from the slider, and it returns the name of a month. So if it returns, if we pass one, it returns January. If it passes two, it returns February, so on and so forth, right? Now, what we wanted to do is if we, let's look at the demo. If we look at the demo, we can see as I move this slider, it updates the content, right? And chances are you probably know how to do that. That's really simple. Uh, but it also, we have a form field here and it actually updates the form field. So it actually takes our value from the slider and Pi can do a bunch of calculations and doing various things. And then it can also, and then update the form field. So how do we do that? First off, let's look at the, this is the form field that we actually want to update. And if we look at the settings, I set this to have a field name of month output. So it has the, it, we're outputting the month to it, right? So I have a field name of month output on this text box. Now, if we go to the pie setting for this, you'll notice that in extra actions, I clicked on form. And basically all you have to do is put in the field name. That's it. Now, what's cool is you can actually do a prefix and suffix here. So if you want to do um, my fave month is, right? And then, um, you know, maybe you put a period after this first suffix. So it's going to create a proper sentence, right? So you can have the field name and then you can have a field prefix and then a suffix. So what this should do is it should do my fave month is January period, right? That's what this should do. Let's have a look. So here we have my fave month is January period. So it created a proper sentence based on uh, the um, slider, right? Pretty cool. So here we're using pi to populate form fields. Now, um, in this example, I'm just updating a text input, but you can use this to update number values as well. Um, maybe you have, you're doing a calculation and then you're gonna output that to, the, to a form field, right? Now, I, I also wanna note, if we look at pi, okay, we'll notice that I gave this pi a name of month text. Now, what a pi does, you don't have to do this, it does it by default every time you add it to the page. It will create a hidden value on the page called month text. So it's gonna create a hidden form value called month text. So if you have pi inside of a form, month text will get submitted as if it was a actual input inside the form so that you can actually process that data, um, whether you're inserting it into a database or processing it in an email text, things of that nature, right? So let's have a look at this, right? If, if I go back to this demo, Let's go ahead and I'm going to inspect this just to kind of show you uh, how all of this happens. If we look here, okay, um, if we zoom in here, we'll notice that there is a type, an input with type hidden that ha has a name of month text. Remember, that's the name I gave pi. Um, don't worry about the class pi watch. And then it has a value of January, right? And if I, if I change this, we'll notice that inside the DOM, it changes as well. So here we have a value of April because I've changed that input. Now, again, you don't see this at all on the page. It's hidden. Um, it's just a, an invisible value that will actually get submitted with the form. And the value name is going to be uh, what you give pi name, right? So the name of pi. So the value that gets submitted is actually the name of the pi stack here, which is month text. 
So that's just a quick video on how you can use Pi with form fields, right? So you can update existing form fields to, you know, output calculations. Then you can use kind of the prefix and, prefix and suffix settings to, you know, augment that data with something else, right? So you can have dynamic data within the middle, right? Pretty cool stuff. Now, remember that Pi also has a hidden form field by default. It does this just by adding Pi to the page. It will automatically create that hidden field for you. You don't need to do anything to get that to happen. It happens out of the box. So I hope you can use Pi, uh, you know, powerfully to, you know, improve your database inserts or your, you, whether or not using it in email and so on and so forth, right? There's a lot of various use cases you can do with this, but um, this is Pi, this is powerful of Pi that it can actually update uh, a form field automatically for you with dynamic content that the user chose based on data in the form. So it's pretty cool. I hope you're enjoying Pi. Please make sure that you share um, your cool creations on Weaver Space so that others can benefit and we can see all the cool things that you're doing with it. I hope that you're enjoying Pi and that it's making your life just a little bit easier. So we'll talk to you later. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.